Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. So, you've probably heard of and seen my sun juice. I'll just hold one up there. So, this is Drosera capensis, and these leaves are roughly about 5 to 10 centimetres long. Well, imagine that something that looks very similar to that, only with leaves 70 centimetres long. We're talking a rather impressive sundew. So that's what we're going to talk about today, Drosera regia. So let's jump in. And we are in. Okay, so Drosera regia. So that is the name for the king sundew, which is a species of sundew plant which is native to South Africa. Now, why is this so exciting for me anyway? The reason it's exciting is because this is a really incredible sundew. Drosera regia comes from one specific valley. It's endemic to one particular valley in the south of Africa, South Africa. And not only is it extremely rare in the wild, it's actually endangered. It's an endangered species of sundew. Now you can imagine if these leaves are 70, and actually there's another name for them other than leaves, which I will look up and put it on the screen. But imagine the prey that they will be able to catch, obviously flying insects and the like, with leaves that are 70 centimeters long. Now I very much doubt I'll get mine to grow so long, but what I've done here is I have sent off for some seeds of Drosera regia and that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to actually sow those seeds. So that might be something that people who are into this kind of things find interesting. So first of all, I've got them off eBay and these seeds come from a guy who is not a commercial grower, but he's well known in the field of tropical plants in the UK. He's actually been featured on Gardener's World, BBC's Gardener's World. His name's Mike, you can find him on Instagram. And if anybody wants to know his exact handle, I can't remember it exactly, but if you message me, I'll let you know his handle so you can follow him. And he grows all sorts of tropical plants in his garden and his greenhouses, and he's really, really good at it. So what he's done here for, think it was in fact i can tell you exactly how much it was for six pound 39 so that's including postage and um, he has sent me some drosera regia seeds 10 plus seeds and he's also sent me a little free gift of drosophyllum lucitanicum which is another carnivorous plant which i might do a separate video on that if i uh, get around to actually looking that one up and he's also sent me the instructions. So he sent me a really detailed set of instructions for sowing those seeds and exactly the same for the Drosophyllum there. Nice detailed set of instructions. So I'm going to follow his instructions and let's see if, well mostly anyway, let's see if we can get ourselves a few of these King Sundew plants. Now if you've seen King Sundews or any kind of Sundews close up, you'll know that they don't really ship very well. I did order a few, I'll just take you through here actually, I did order a few a while back and they were looking very very sad when they arrived here but they're looking much much better now, especially this one, this one is Drosera uh, Binata, I think variety Multifida, Multifida, Multifida and that one's coming on really nicely now. Uh, it's not really developed all the dew that it should do, but don't forget at this time of year, it's January now, a lot of these sundews do actually go into dormancy. Um, now I've found that in my greenhouse at 12 degrees Celsius, they don't go into dormancy quite as much. Um, and I have actually read on, in some uh, very prestigious books on carnivorous plants that they don't have to go into dormancy if you keep them a little bit warmer they'll carry on growing for you no problem and they won't really suffer for it so that's that one there's another couple down there which aren't looking quite as good yet uh, that one down there that one is the madagascariensis it appears to be dying along the length of it now again it could just be that it's going dormant so uh, we'll just move back over here I'm not going to throw it out if it does look like it's died out. So I'll just tell you a very, very brief little bit of information about this King Sundew, and I'll try and put a, a couple of pictures up on the screen there. So Drosera itself is Greek. It means dewy uh, or containing dew. 
And that's obviously in reference to all the little bits of sticky mucilage, I believe it's called, that uh, adorn those very fine hairs that the insects get stuck to and then the thing curls up around the, the prey so that it can digest it. Regia obviously means royal or king-like, so Drosera regia, so you've got like a royal dewy plant. So, in terms of media, uh, Mike recommends uh, using 50% peat and 50% perlite. Now, I've been having a go, or I'm about to have a go anyway, at using a peat substitute, and there it is down there, it's actually Koya. And I got some of those bricks, and I'll show you how I did it at some point. Um, there's just one dehydrated brick, and you just simply add water to it, it's very, very simple, um, and you get this substance. And I'm thinking, well, why not? Let's give it a go. I'm not sure they will actually know any difference. They're supposed to be fairly easy to germinate, so I'm going to give it a go. 50% perlite is a lot of perlite, actually, to use 50%. Um, but we'll see what happens. And what you actually do is you mix that up, put it in a tray here, and the surface of it should be covered with a very fine sphagnum moss. There are other ways of doing it. This is just Mike's preferred method. And then you put it in an inch of water. So that's what I'm going to do. He recommends putting it in full sun at a temperature of above 15 degrees Celsius. Now, obviously, in this side of the greenhouse, I've got 18. So I'm not going to cover it. I'm going to try them as is uh, at 18 degrees Celsius. I've got the grow lights on them as well. So hopefully we won't have too much problem with that. The seeds, I believe, can be viable for over 12 months, and he harvested these, I think he said, in July, so this should be okay. So, yeah, we mentioned that uh, Drosera regia is endemic to a single valley in South Africa. I found that really interesting and really fascinating, and um, that I can have that growing in my greenhouse. It's absolutely incredible that it's never got beyond this one valley. Uh, when you dig a little deeper into it, it appears they nearly died out in that valley until there was, uh, like, a fire that spread through the valley and that destroyed a lot of the competition and because this plant can rejuvenate from the roots uh, especially when it's gone dormant it can rejuvenate so it was able to bounce back so it's different to some of the other Drosera in fact all the other Drosera is completely different to because it can or it does create a woody rhizome which is completely like other Drosera species and uh, as I said before dormancy isn't necessary but it can it will go dormant if you get it down to temperatures below five degrees it shouldn't kill it it should still pop up later i do believe that it can frost but obviously if it's frosted for a long period of time that may well kill it but just a touch of frost it should be okay and it should come back from dormancy the flowers are actually quite pretty so i'll see if i can put a, a little picture up there on the screen of some of the drosera regia blooms but that's not why we're growing it i'm growing it because of the because of the leaves really because of the dew and um, obviously it's fly catching abilities which will be very handy as well so this is the most ancient of all sun dews and in actual fact when scientists studied the molecules of this particular plant it turned out that it was actually more closely related to the venus flytrap than it is to the other drosera which i thought was really interesting so what i'm going to do now is sow these seeds and i'll let you have a little look okay right here we go so here's for the fun part i'm going to mix it all together so like i said i've never used this coir before but i do believe it's really good for anything that you would have peat in it doesn't actually have any nutrients in it so it's useful to know uh, i'm guessing it would be okay for lots of other carnivorous plants it feels just the same it feels practically the same as peat to be honest I love this bit, it's like making a mud pie. Right, okay, I think that's mixed up enough. Hopefully I've got enough there. So this tray is actually out of my heated propagator. And I do believe that if you give them a little bit of bottom heat, then they may well, or they are likely to germinate much more quickly for you. It's quite a deep tray, obviously with it being part of a propagator, uh, which is gonna be better for me because these Drosera don't particularly like the roots to be disturbed and they don't really transplant very well. I think the younger ones are better than the older ones. 
I did actually try to prick out some of my Drosura seedlings and in the end I give up because every one I did died off. It may well have been dormant, I wasn't to worry that they go dormant at that point but uh, I think I might have kept one for a while and it didn't pop back up again. So this, I ended up just keeping a tray of the seedlings and leaving it as they were. And I think what's happening is the more strong ones, the stronger ones are out competing the less strong ones. So I'll probably still end up with a decent plant. So seeds are the way to go with sundews, I think. I think getting them online isn't really the thing to do. So we're going to get our seeds out here from this little packet. I don't want to disturb my Drosophyllum seeds because I will, will have a go at that. We might as well, seeing as he's been good enough to send them for free. So, get that one out of the way. <coughs> and here's the seeds. So, let's have a little look. So, it's always useful to tap the packet. I know I'm probably teaching Grandma to suck eggs here, but you don't want them near the top. Let's have a look. At least you can see them. They're, they're not massive, but they're not like dust either. Yeah. I mean, they're certainly not big. I mean, there's, they're so small, it's, it's way, way more than 10. So what I'm going to do here is... Oh, I forgot something. I you've been shouting at the screen. I forgot to put the sphagnum on. So what we've got to do is get a, a finely chopped layer of sphagnum. So I'll just, I mean, this is long fibred New Zealand sphagnum. So I'm just going to kind of pull it apart. And then we'll get that on the surface. It's very exciting, this. Apparently they take four to six weeks to germinate, uh, providing you've got all the best conditions for it. And <coughs> he recommended doing it in summer. But you can do it at any time of the year, providing you've got the temperatures and the light. So obviously in my greenhouse, I've got the temperature here and I've got the light as well. Now, whether it's actually intense enough, we shall see. It's not that they won't germinate, it's just that they will take a little bit longer. I might need a little bit more there. Let's just talk amongst yourselves for a moment. This, this sphagnum is, it's already kind of damp. I keep it in a, a plastic bag and it came like this. So I wouldn't think, I certainly won't need to top water it. I think that should do, shouldn't it? Press it down. Okay, I, I would normally do this kind of thing where you make a little groove and then you tap the seed packet. Well, these are quite small. I can just, I don't know if you can see them. You know, I find it hard to do that little motion with my other hand. It's better with my right hand for some reason. There we go. So you can see as you tap them, they're coming out towards the end. Yeah, I can see why he's not. He's put 10 plus seeds. So what I want to try and do is get them so they're not coming out all at once in a big lump. Which is easier said than done. I think we're managing it. If I can get them separate, then it's going to be easier to transplant them. I, I've had a look at some other videos on YouTube of people that have done things similar like this, and they do lose quite a few of them through one thing and another. Nearly done. A couple more there, I think that's the lot. Urgh, yes, that's the lot. Okay, so all I'm to do really is to press them down. So I'm just going to use a little bit of old terracotta pot there just to press them down. I'm not using my fingers because I don't want them to, I think they're more likely to stick to my fingers than they are a terracotta pot. So this is what he recommended just press them down to make sure that they have contact with the surface of the sphagnum. Um, they don't need to be hidden from the light. You don't need to cover them with anything. That's it. That's all there is to it. That's all there's none on there. <laughs> okay, so next job. I'll just empty this tray out while there's a little bit of stuff falling into it. And I will label that. And I'm simply going to water 
into the tray. Obviously this tray doesn't have any holes in it. This is one of my gravel trays that I use a lot. And I'm going to water that so that it's about an inch deep. And then I'm going to keep it at an inch deep. Somehow try and find a uh, space in the greenhouse for it to go in the warm side and that's that so we'll come back to that and have a look in a few weeks time to see what happens and i'll make that part two of the video so i hope you enjoyed this very quick video on sowing drosera regia seeds if you've had a go at this and you've done it successfully or not and you've learned from it please put that in the comments love to hear from people and for now i'll see you on the next one bye